Hey Scorpio, welcome back to my channel. And thank you for joining me for your bi-weekly messages this week. I've already started shuffling the cards and pulled a few earlier. I had to stop the video because my dogs were beating down the back door to go outside. So we're gonna start from the top um, and look at the energies and the messages coming in for you for the next two weeks, okay? The first cards that came out are the Ace of Staves and the Queen of Pentacles here. So um, I'm actually really feeling like you guys are carrying some kind of torch at this point. Obviously, it's the Ace of Staves. It looks like a torch. However, I feel like whereas in the past it might have been in the service of others or for others, I feel like the torch you're carrying now is something like illumination from within. It's realizing your value, realizing your worth, realizing your gifts and talents and the fact that there is no one else like you. There's no one else who could fill the role that you fill. And so I feel in some sense that there may be situations where you are not um, appreciated to the extent which you should be maybe you are not getting paid enough or you know a partner is constantly um undercutting you or um a relationship in a relationship you're just not getting the attention or you know the the respect as a human being that you deserve and i do feel like there may actually be some heated words exchanged um about this kind of I don't know, uh, about this, what do I wanna say? This sort of disparity in uh, treatment in, in, sense that, in the sense that you know what you're worth now and this person or group or job or whatever is really stuck in some kind of past timeline where you know you were not accepting, accepting of or understanding of your own self-worth. And that's where the real crux of the issue was because um, you teach people how to treat you, right? I'm sure you've heard that before. I'm sure I've said it before. Uh, and until you really knew that self-worth, none of those other people were going to get it either. So at this point, it's almost like a new beginning. It's almost like the culmination. You know, we're in Virgo season. We are just stepping into September. Um, it's like there's a culmination of the harvest or something and you're harvesting all of the energies that came through to us throughout the summer via eclipses um, and new moons and full moons and all kinds of shifts and changes that we're all going through right now, right? So this is your harvesting of that energy. And the, <laughs> this is weird how they're saying it, the feast at the end is basically you're, uh, you're like the sort of a minor version of the empress here. It's like uh, you're the dessert at the at the end of the feast or something like that. Like you are realizing what you're, you are worth, how you are an individual, how you are different from other people, how you're special. Um, that's not to say other people aren't special. Of course they are, but everybody has their own attributes, right? So you're beginning to see kind of coyly see and understand and recognize what those things are and you're going to hold people accountable for recognizing that moving forward um i do think and this came out before with the um here's the seven of pentacles i think that you're seeing and reevaluating situations that you're in where you're not receiving this kind of recognition for who you are okay and i don't mean like accolades necessarily I just mean being treated like um, a sovereign human being, not like a slave or somebody who's taken for granted in a relationship. There's definitely, when the seven of coins comes up, there's often sort of this need to look at the situation and, and say, is everything that I've invested in this still worth it to me? Because you have invested a lot. 
you have a lot to invest. You're seeing your worth, right? Maybe that's literally money, that you've spent a lot of money in this situation. But I think more than anything, it's about your um, personality attributes, your, you know, maybe what you bring to the table as, you know, uh, expertise at a job or your emotional depth as a partner. All of those things are attributes that are to be valued. So what's coming up with the seven of coins is the strength card here. All right. And what I feel from that First of all, I get the sense that whoever this is, whatever job this is or person this is that is not valuing valuing you appropriately is holding you back. So um, evaluate that too as part of sort of reevaluating, is this worth my continued investment? So this person is holding you back. It's going to take a degree of strength or it has taken a degree of strength to break out of the old patterning that you were in uh, with regard to your own value, your own worth, or what you, sh what you should be putting up with in an organization or uh, relationship. I think it's gonna take some strength to break free completely. You see that horse, quote unquote, he looks like he's breaking free from a handler in the background as he is standing there holding her back. So I actually am getting the really distinct idea right at this moment that people are afraid of your power. You know, whether that is um, literally afraid that you're going to pass them up and take over the company, or whether that is somebody is afraid of your own personal power, what you have to offer, how will that make them feel vulnerable and not good enough themselves. So they are afraid of your power in some sense, and that's why they've held you back or discounted you to your face at least so that you would begin to believe that. And so I'm kind of picking up on some manipulation that's been happening within either a job situation, organizations, or uh, a personal relationship. I am getting a lot of personal relationships here. So if you're if you are uh, resonating with this, this may be you, okay? I feel like, you know, um, I don't always do the cards like this, but today I am, for whatever reason, and we're making some columns. And underneath this Ace of Staves is the Seven of Coins. And so this kind of new perspective on what it is that you're worth or what it is you should be putting up with is is part of this new beginning is part of this reevaluation makes sense makes sense okay. so we've got the 10 of wands the two of wands, two of staves, and the prince of cups. Okay. Uh, clearly you have a burden here. That's why it's going to take strength to break free from it, you know. Um, and in fact, you've had an incredible amount of strength to be holding it for this long. And it does have to do with basically, I feel like you've been taking a degree of a, almost abuse from another person or, or a business or something like that from your job. It's a degree of abuse. And now you're not going to take it anymore. You know, you've really, you've absolutely had enough. You've got to make a decision. You know, there's something better out there for you. Libra's reading was very similar. So maybe you have placements in Libra. You might want to watch that one as, as well. Um, You've got to make a decision. There, there is something better out there for you. And in fact, with the Prince of Cups, this is Tristan. I could be wrong, but I feel like the character of Tristan is a grail knight. Is he not searching for the Holy Grail? I think that he is. I think 
that's the story. If not, that is still the archetype they're putting in my head. So what is your holy grail? Is this it? Because you're really evaluating whether this is worth it or not. Um, and seeing that this is such a burden that you are exhausted, you're past the point of exhausted, right? Exhausted is the nine of staves. This is the 10. I think that your holy grail is out there. It's somewhere out there. It's not where you are now. And it's because of the strength of you understanding what you're worth and that you can do better, you deserve better. That's what's gonna be able to fuel this journey, the search for the holy grail, like your holy grail. Um, that may literally be like in a kind of Jesus Mary Magdalene, kind of like Da Vinci Code way, another person, a divine compliment, a twin flame, right? It could also simply be, and I feel like this is valid in either case, and maybe the most important point to make, that this is that place within you where you um, fill the cup, where you fill the cup up, because now you see your value again, and you begin investing in yourself, whether that's literally by investing in school or getting your own apartment or whatever, or investing your time, your energy, your unconditional love. Number one is the most important thing is the unconditional love. But investing your time to take time away, to take a break, to take a rest, to get away from the kids for a minute, or to um, take time to go get a massage, go to the gym for yourself because it makes you feel good. In that sense, um, this very much is a is in alignment with the message that came through for the new moon on the 30th. So check that out if you have not yet. It is about um, reevaluating our ha habitual actions and the things that affect our physical body. Uh, that's those are all the messages that came through for that new moon in Virgo. And to me, this is almost this is a little like that. Uh, filling that cup, filling that cup within your holy grail within and filling that up by evaluating the way that you are treating yourself. Are you living up to the value that you know you have? And are you investing back in it with your habits, with the things that affect your emotions, your physical body, everything that, uh, everything about you? Are you giving yourself the opportunities that you deserve? Um, because for very for a very long time you have been held back by someone or something else. This could be a physical this could be a physical ailment too that's holding you back, and that you are really now investing the time in figuring out what's going on with you, or um, even following the doctor's orders if you haven't been. Whatever it is, you know you're making a change that's releasing a burden. You've had to make a choice to get there. And I feel like for many of you, the Holy Grail is your own physical body, okay? Let's see what else wants to come out. All right, we've got the Five of Cups with the awakening and the king of cups. I think that to a degree, it is through this process of really activating and living the strength and sovereignty that even though it's a difficult situation, even though it's always hard to leave something behind, um, it's sort of like a bird in the hand and is worth two in the bush or something like that, but the opposite. It's like you're leaving behind what you know isn't working even though you had it in your hand and you're moving forward on your grail search here. And in that, in that process, you become awakened to your innermost truth, to what that grail represents, what that grail really is, 
okay? And I am I know that all of you are going to find that it's within you, okay? Um, you might, in this awakening process, go through the process of directing it outwards at other people, thinking that, Oh, I will be so happy and feel perfect if this person is in my life or if I have this job or whatever. I'm trying to remember the story of Cupid and Psyche and I actually can't remember it right now, but I do feel like something fucked up happens. <laughs> but it is the myths, you know, something fucked up always happens. Um... So this process is, is awakening you to a greater truth about um, your own power, your own power, King of Cups, um, the power of unconditional love, your power to attract that into your life and to manifest that through your own holding of that energy, filling of your own cup. So if you were trying to manifest things mentally before, if you were just trying to work hard, I think that you're going to learn that the fulfillment of the emotional body or the, the um, clearing and the um, alignment of the emotional body of the self is paramount in achieving this finding of the grail because the grail's within all along, right? This is that deep and masterful connection with the emotional self. It also relates to other people and how uh, there may be a, you may be a role model for some people or a teacher or counselor of some sort. I'm just putting that out there because that's just jumping in there right now. And this, this truly helps to up level you in a way that nothing else could have. Um, releasing the burden that we were talking about. This is sacrifice. Uh, I believe it is, yes, it's the hanged man. The release of that burden is the sacrifice that takes place. This is so like the Libra. I think I even said in that reading that there is a sacrifice that takes place and it is the thing that is no longer working for you. And that's exactly what I'm feeling here, that you will make a sacrifice, but in the end, it is not a sacrifice. You know, you're giving yourself a, a gift by filling your own cup and removing the, the burdens, the things that are sucking your energy, the things that are not growing to fruition the way you thought that they would. Uh, again, it could be anything from a job to a relationship to a friendship to a creative project that just needs to be... Uh, removed needs to be stopped um i don't want you to get caught up in your head we've got the seven of cups coming up here and you do feel like that represents a degree of fear of this kind of emotional pain that can result when you're moving away from something which has almost has held you hostage what's that called munchausen's munchausen's by proxy i don't know uh, look that up. <laughs> that might be it. But it's almost like you believe you cannot exist. Is that the right? Is that the right? I don't know. That could be totally wrong. That just came up, but I cannot verify without looking it up and stopping the reading. So, but in in any case, I feel like you you have a lot of fear of the pain of releasing this burden, but. Part of it is because you've been made to believe that you can't do it on your own. Um, this reading started out with a profound acknowledgement of your of your worth. So I think that in some level, you know they're full of shit. But I don't want you to have fear of that. Um, I'm still getting the impression that there's something better out there. Maybe it's this like sort of spirit kissing her cheek, that this is something that has not come in yet. And you've got all these things that are not doing it for you, but here's the thing, that, that holy grail thing, you know what I mean? And again, it's, it's truly within you, but then the external things begin to come into your life as you fill your own cup. And 
Then we've got transformation with the Prince of Coins. This might be a slow burn, guys. This might be a slow burn uh, of you making this change in your life. But it kicks off now. And it kicks off as a result of this newfound self-worth, okay? Um, don't ignore or deny any feelings that might suggest that you need to reevaluate your situation because it's coming out in the energies now. Definitely take a look at it. Don't be afraid of um, losing that which is harming you. I do feel that this is part of a transformational process that... Um, in the end, this painful situation is kind of a sacrifice for your higher good, okay? For your emotional fulfillment, for your finding and filling up of the grail. And just know that it, even if you take cautious steps forward, that there's still steps forward. There's still transformational energies moving through you. You're still not the person you were yesterday. You're breaking free. You're gaining strength. You're seeing your worth. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you decide you would like to schedule a private reading, you can do that on my website, which is IamEmilyGear.com. Um, you can schedule a reading, Akashic Records work, energy work, whatever you like. Although I will say that the 60 minute, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the 30 minute sessions are appropriate more for readings, not so much the energy work, okay? Um, so for whatever it's worth, I hope that this was helpful and I will see you guys again in two weeks. Okay. Bye.